Welcome to ECE 761 Robotics, lecture number five, Inverse Kinematics for Rhino Robot. Now the Rhino Robot was a small robot that was designed for university and educational purposes. It's a four degree freedom robot that you can see here. He's got the base that you can rotate, the shoulder joint, elbow joint, then a wrist. The wrist puts the end effector down a little bit. There's also the claws can rotate, open up, compress. Can hold a lot of weight, but it is a, a fairly nice robot, fairly typical of what you're going to see. Uh, the goal of this lecture is to come up with the forward kinematics and inverse kinematics for Rhino robot so you can specify its motion. So starting out, we want to come up with the forward kinematics. To do that, you define the reference frames. So here's the base, comes up to the shoulder. The shoulder, it then rotates about the base, that's axis C1. It can also spin up and down, kind of bring it back to here. This is the shoulder spins around, this joint will go up and down. Takes you to the elbow, the elbow rotates about axis C3. Then the wrist rotates about axis C4. And then pointing down is the end effector. This one actually has an extra degree freedom right here. That's the end effector that comes down to the tip of the robot. So to define the forward kinematics, going from 0 to 1, I have no twist. 1 to 2, that's the z-axis rotates by 90 degrees. Uh, 3, 0, 4, 0, 4 to 5, the z-axis rotates minus 90 degrees. Uh, A's are the distances in the exit direction. So this is 0, 0, A2 is 50, another 50, and 0. The D's are the displacements. First one's 50, and then 5. So that defines the robot, the Rhino robot. The forward kinematics are actually fairly straightforward. Specify Q, alpha, A, and D, and you specify the robot, Rhino robot. If I now tell the robot, go to a certain spot like 0.4 radians, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, minus 1.1, I get a spot. Or if I put it in the zero position, that's the zero position for a Rhino robot. So that's all stuff we've done before. Now what I want to do is come up with the inverse dynamics, or inverse kinematics. The inverse kinematics is the opposite. Forward kinematics is given the joint angles, where's the tip? We just did that. Inverse kinematics is given the tip position, what are the joint angles? There's two ways to do that, the algebraic solution and geometric solution. The algebraic solution seems fairly straightforward. If I know where the tip is, so here's the tip position, I can find out where it is in Earth coordinates just by doing the translation matrix from reference frame 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, multiply it out, I get where's the tip relative to frame 0. If you look at the rhino, I've got a slight problem, I've got that wrist. That wrist gives me an extra degree of freedom, so I've got 4 degrees of freedom, 3 constraints. So instead, let's force the end effector to be pointing straight down. What that does is it forces theta 4 plus theta 3 plus theta 2 to equal 0. Then I'm specifying where's the wrist of the robot. That gives me 3 degrees of freedom. With 3 degrees of freedom and 3 constraints, I have 3 equations, 3 unknowns, and I should be able to solve. So multiplying all this out, we wind up with this being the tip position based upon theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. So that means here's my 3 equations for 3 unknowns. I know the tip position, x, y, z. What are the joint angles? This, unfortunately, is not very easy to solve, so we need a better method. That's method number two, a geometric solution. If you look at the top of a Rhino robot, I've got the base coordinates right here. This is the top. So the rotate moves around. The tip of the robot moves. The base angle, theta 1, is fairly easily defined. It's just the arctangent of y over x, or x over y. That's one of the angles. 
uh, other two angles you got to work for. If I take the robot and look at it uh, from the side, I see the base is up 50 millimeters, 50 centimeters. I come out, this is the distance to the tip. I've got the first link, the second link, all 50 centimeters. Uh, doing some trigonometry. From the shoulder to the tip is distance d. The height above the shoulder is z minus 50. The distance out in the xy plane is r. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. This side d is the square root or square root of r squared plus z minus 50 squared. This is half of d. That side h I can find from a right triangle. 50 squared minus d over 2 squared is h squared. Take the square root. I can find the angles. This is out theta a, this angle right in here. That's just the arctangent of z over 50 over r. This angle right here, theta b, is the arctangent of h over d over 2. Then theta 2 is just minus theta a plus theta b. And if we work it out, theta 3 is 180 degrees minus 2 times this angle. So that gives me my three angles, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. That's the program inverse rhino, which is posted on Bison Academy. Given the tip position, it goes through these calculations and tells you what the joint angles are. It assumes that the tip is pointing straight down. That gives you the fourth equation. And the constraint that for that is that Q4 is minus Q2 plus Q3. Now to check on that to see if this is working, I can type in a point. saying if the angles are 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and theta 4 is minus theta 2 plus theta 3, here's the tip position. If I take the inverse kinematics, or inverse, yep, inverse kinematics, I should get the same answer, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So that's working. Okay, the last example, now that I have the inverse rhino and rhino pro programs working, let's have it draw out a square. What I'll do is I'll specify the tip position. This is x, I mean the x-axis, then y, x, and z, going around a square. Once I define where the tip is supposed to be every 10 milliseconds, I'll then spin through that array. For each element of the array, I know the tip position at that time. Calculate the joint angles. Once I know the joint angles, draw the robot, run a robot, and pause. So here you see the tip is tracing out the square correctly. showing that the inverse kinematics and forward kinematics is working. The homework for this week is basically to do the same thing. Come up with two different uh, robots, specify the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics, and uh, demonstrate it's working. Do something like this. If I specify a point, I should, given a point, or given an angle, find the point. Given a point, find the angles. I should wind up back where I started. Or optional, which is kind of more fun. Pick a shape and have it draw out that shape. And here I chose a square. So you could do a star, a triangle, you know, whatever you like. So that's lecture number five inverse kinematics of a rhino robot.